Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Parasite Podcast. And uh, you know, I got to get used to that because I keep saying Venom Vlog on my previous guests. And uh, so, but now we have this new show and this show is not just about me, but it's about me having conversations with other people, either in the Venom fandom, sometimes it's people that have had me on their podcast, and I want to return the favor and have them on mine now that we have this show. And it's just a way for us to have a spotlight and kind of grow this, uh, you know, this fandom. And I, I don't see that happening a lot in other fandoms. And I wanted the Venom fandom. It's been so special to me over the years and helped me grow and, and make a, a name for myself on this platform, thanks to all of you and all the support. So this is my way of, you know, giving you guys a chance to be on the show talking with me and kind of telling us about the kind of Venom stuff you're into or content that you create if you create content. And today with me, I have someone who creates some very awesome Venom-related content, but it's actually about a completely different character than Venom, but it is one of his offsprings, which is the character Scream. And here with me today is Allie. Allie, thanks so much. Uh, please say hello to everybody. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Allie. I run Let's Talk Scream over on Twitter, and I have my own YouTube, which is under Allie Scream Darkling. Thanks for having me, Zeke. Hey, no problem. And I'm going to put a link to both of those in the description down below. So if you guys are listening, uh, you can check those links out. Make sure you subscribe to her on YouTube, and make sure you follow her on Twitter. She posts a lot of Scream content. And luckily, there's going to be more Scream content coming out from Marvel, which I know you were a little worried about, but we're going to get that into a second. I, I don't want to dive straight into the Scream stuff yet, what I'd like to dive into is a little bit about you, Ali. Uh, you know, I love your passion, first of all, online. Every time you post, you got this really positive energy about yourself and the stuff you put out there. And that's what I see a lot in the Venom fandom. And I like that. It's it's That's the kind of stuff I like to do on my channel. And when I see you and other people doing it, it's like, oh man, I gotta talk to that person. I gotta talk to Ali now. You were one of the first people that popped in my head that I wanted to have on this show. and. I want to know, you know, kind of a little bit about your background. Where do you come from and how did you get into comic books in general? Was it a recent thing or a long time thing? I'd love to know. Um, it was pretty recent. I really didn't get into into comics at all until me until me after me and my husband got married. I knew so little about comics that when he told me about Venom and he was talking up Eddie Brock and talking up Venom, I just stared at him and said, What's the big deal? Isn't Venom just Spider-Man in a black suit? Like that, I knew nothing. He ended. He ended up. Um, we ended up going and seeing the Venom movie opening weekend, and I don't. I don't know. I. I don't know what it was about the movie that clicked with me, but it just completely clicked with me, and I ended up immersing myself in the Venom fandom on Tumblr, and that ended up going over into Twitter, I ended up finding Scream through her Marvel Legends figure, because I seen it at Walmart, and, and you know, seen a female character, and a beautiful one at that, and basically went, okay, I want this figure, and my husband said, well, we'll get it, but I want you to read about her so that you know you like her first, <laughs> and I ended up reading about her, and I guess the rest is history. That's awesome. Well, big shout out to your husband for one being a big Venom fan. That's awesome, and also two, uh, you know, you know, you know, negotiating this with you in a way where he's like, "Hey, cool, you want that toy? That's awesome. Glad you like the movie. Let's look into the lore of this character. Let's see how much you love her, and then we'll go from there." And little did he probably know, and maybe even little did you know, that kind of spawned, uh, you know, pun intended, like you into. Uh, you know, making a name for yourself online by following this character, and and how did that come about? Like, what what was what was that moment where you were like, all right, I'm gonna be the voice of Scream on the internet? I was already on Twitter anyway, okay. and I had seen a couple other Let's Talk accounts. I seen at the time there was a Let's Talk Venom, and a then um, Let's Talk Carnage, and I noticed that there wasn't any for Scream, and I was kind of thinking about making a Scream one, but I wasn't sure. And it was the middle of the night, like two or three in the morning and I couldn't sleep I got on Twitter and seen that her tie-ins for Absolute Carnage had been announced and I just decided right then and there you know what it's time let's let, let's make let's talk scream I made it that night and started and started following different accounts in the morning when I had more time and I I, I guess it was her Absolute Carnage tie-in and hearing that she was getting this revival that she desperately needed that really kicked off me wanting to start the account you know that's what one of the main things I, I want with this show and the reason I like bringing other fans on and why I want this spotlight on others and stuff and, and focus on other people is because 
I want fans, I think the one thing that fans argue over a lot in other fandoms, and even sometimes in the Venom fandom, is people are like, why don't you like my character? Or why don't you, um, you know, oh, you're a newer fan, you know, you're not old school. You know, everyone has like these these like weird uh, rules that you have to follow in order to be a true fan kind of thing. And me, I'm the opposite. Hearing you say that you came into Venom and this fandom from the movie is amazing to me. Like, I... I as a longtime reader, I love that so much, and people always give me crap, like, oh, but they're new to the fandom, they're this, and it's like, yeah, but that's so great, like, think about that, the Venom movie pulled you in, and then that pulled you to this character that, honestly, now when I think of the character, I think of you, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and and I can't, I can't mean that in a more complimentary way, like, I, I'm just like, yo, yeah, oh, yeah, that's Allie, like, every time Scream pops up, I see an ad for her, or whatever, I'm like, that's Allie, man, that, that's so cool, so doing that and, and you know putting in that work and following people and getting on reddit and talking to people and being very interactive in that community what has that you know brought you in a way like what, what you know how did that change you from who you were into who you are now if i'm being complete honest when i've seen the venom movie i wasn't really in the best place i was having some issues with um with postpartum depression and things like that and mm -hmm seeing the Venom movie, it kind of gave, gave me something to shift my focus on. And the same thing with Scream and being in this community. It was like, all of a sudden, I got to I got to be a part of this community, this fandom that was so, so supportive because I'd been in other fandoms before and left other fandoms because there wasn't that support that you get with the symbiote fandom, with the Marvel fandom itself. And I think that's so awesome. And you know, like like you mentioned, where you didn't really grow up with any friends that read comics. I think it's awesome that kids who don't have any real life friends who read comics now they can get online and they can meet all these people that have the same interests as them, and they feel included and accepted. And I think that's so awesome. I I agree. I, and I, again, I love your positivity about that. I I was telling my mom uh, on the phone yesterday. I said, you know, what's funny when I was a kid in the '80s, my two favorite comics were Teen Titans and X Men because those were very those spoke the language of a kid like when if you were a kid going into maybe closer to teenager in the 80s that you you love those books because they they set it's all the characters were teenagers and they sounded like you they were like you know how you wanted to sound they were cool and awesome and, and had their stuff together and that's how you wanted to be and you were just like ah screw the world they don't understand me but i'm like a teen titan or i'm an x-men and now i see kids walking around even though it's a different iteration of them but i see kids walking around saying booyah and they got these teen titan shirts and i'm like that's so amazing i there was no such thing as a teen titan shirt when i was a kid um and and so so for scream now we're getting like this is a character that was low tier and and for for years i mean she was popular in the sense that like uh she splashed on the scene out of all the five symbiotes she was definitely the one that people focused on the most because i think of her look and i also think people were just jonesing for a cool female symbiote type character which we weren't getting ever you know it seemed like it was just like one guy after another and when scream popped on the scene she spiked so quickly that she went right into the universal studios uh roller coaster ride which is uh amazing have you ever ridden that ride at all or get a chance to i haven't i've seen footage from it i have to, i have i have a medical condition so i have to be careful mm -hmm. on what roller coasters i ride so if i were going to ride it i have to like call my doctor and be like hey can i ride this roller coaster is it cool is it good yeah. okay good okay i'm gonna go do it but if i ever get to go down to florida i will ride that ride as long as i'm able to just so that i can see her because i've seen pictures i've seen the little animations they play when you're in, when you're in the line and it just looks like a great time that's uh that's awesome yeah i hope for that for you one day and i know what that's like i i remember after my aneurysm like a year and a half later they opened the green lantern ride at six flags in california and i showed the video to my doctor i said can i ride this and he was like no are you insane he's like <laughs> he's like of course you can't ride that and so i did um, and it was off. It was awful uh, afterwards. So, um, you, you know, you start this account for for Twitter with Let's Talk Scream. Um, you have your main account too, right? A symbiotic goth. Yes. Uh, and then and then you start the YouTube channel. What was the moment where you were like, okay, I'm I'm doing the the Twitter. I'm on Reddit. I'm on all these other platforms. What pushed you to be like, you know what? I also want to make a YouTube channel where I can just talk about this character. Was it also the comic book? off and on for forever ever since I was a teenager but 
honest, honestly, if I'm being complete honest about what really got me back into wanting to do YouTube about comics, it was watching your videos and seeing your passion for Venom. And I was kind of thinking, you know, this is awesome. You know, I've already got this. I've already got this screen Twitter. I've already got kind of an audience. You know, if, if Seek's going to be the Venom guy, I can be the Scream girl. And it, I just made my, made my first video talking about my favorite plot point in the Absolute Carnage tie-in, and I just haven't stopped yet. Uh, first of all, I'm deeply flattered. Uh, that's, very, that's very nice of you to say. Um, I, too, uh, created a YouTube channel because I was inspired by others. Mine was a guy named The Rage in Nation who covers uh, the Transformer movies by Michael Bay. And, uh, and he got me into, so everything I do on my channel, only pulling stuff from real sources and all that stuff, that's all because that's what Rage and Nation does. So I pretty much emulate him. And, uh, and that means a lot because I do, I, you know, I don't want to be the only person talking about symbiotes on YouTube. Um, I do want more people to create channels and talk about characters. Even if they're talking about Venom, I want more of it. And when you started that channel, I remember on Twitter and I was like, Oh, that's so awesome. And I remember watching your first video and seeing that passion and seeing how excited you were. And then seeing the announcement. Um, and I'm going to go I'm going to go a little ahead and we'll go back because I want to talk about older Scream stuff. But you, when they made the announcement, OK, we got a mini series for Scream. Then there was the OK, we're doing an ongoing that day when I went right to your Twitter account and I was like, I got to see what she's saying about this. And, and you have any time I see anything about Scream, I immediately go, let's go check in on Allie because I want to know what she thinks uh, first before anyone else. Uh, and so what was that moment like when you found out, oh, man, I'm getting a full series with this character? So um, I cried. I will openly admit that <laughs> there is a video hidden. Well, it's not hidden, but it's buried in my in the LT Scream account where I woke up. I, I don't. I woke up that morning, or it was right after right after my son had woken up, or something. I didn't see it one the second it went live, but I opened Twitter and I had all these notifications, and I was like, "Whoa, I'm being tagged in like you know there's a, there's like four or five accounts tagging me and stuff." what's going on and I seen it and I, I, I'm pretty sure I screamed <laughs> I know for a fact I cried because it's on video because I, I, I don't care about crying on video about something like that I cry over everything as it is I'm not not even embarrassed about that <laughs> but I was so happy it was like finally we get this awesome this awesome symbiote this awesome female character who's going to get her own ongoing I was so happy I'm still ecstatic about it I can't think of a a character, especially since Anne Wang unfortunately has passed away in the comic books, but outside of her, Scream to me from the 90s, and, and we'll go back and talk about some of that, but I remember her first appearance, I, I bought Lethal Protector, you know, the day it came out, because at that point I was already locked in, I had read Maximum Carnage, I had become a big Venom fan, and, uh, and seeing these new characters, out of all of them, Scream was the only one I cared about, and anytime she popped up in other books, uh, which she did for a couple years, I loved it. And then she got the roller coaster and I became a big fan. And then nothing for years and years and years. And then this came along and that made me happy. And then to see it, you know, create a diehard fan like you, that's awesome. So when you when your husband was like, hey, we got to go back and see if you like this character, what stuff did you read that was existing? Because obviously the main, the, the, the miniseries and stuff from Absolute Carnage wasn't out yet. So w what did you read or, or what, what stood out to you about the character that you remember diving into to learn about her? Wait, the first thing that I read with her was Venom's separation anxiety because I, I knew a little bit about Scream just because I'd seen some of the other accounts talk about her, but I didn't know enough to even carry a conversation about her at all other than the fact that, hey, there's a female symbiote and she's pretty. <laughs> so I read Separation Anxiety. I I don't know. It's it's hard to pinpoint one thing that really stood out with her. Sure. I like the fact that out of these group of symbiotes, out of the, the Life Foundation symbiote, she was kind of the leader. Because yes. coming out of the coming out of the Venom movie, I expect I kind of expected you know Riot to be the leader because he's the leader from that movie, and it was a neat surprise reading Separation Anxiety and being like, hey. You know, there's this strong female who's leading her friends to try and get them help. She does end up killing them. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we all we all make mistakes and things happen. <laughs> yeah. So we. So, hey, come on. Who hasn't accidentally killed all five of their best friends? Right. It's like. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's like happens every Tuesday for <laughs> for some people. Yeah. 
Exactly. You just make new five new friends or four new friends, and then you, it's, it's fine. It's it's cool. But yeah, it, I separation anxiety is probably one of my favorite. If we're talking like the '90s Venom, the '90s Venom Venom comics, mm-hmm. separation anxiety is one of my favorites. Anyway, and just I don't know everything about her. I just loved immediately. And that's so. And in saying that, are you a big um, Donna Diego fan, or are you? Now that you've been reading the new stuff, like, because there's now there's like three personalities in the in the person you know in the new screen. So uh, so we have Andy and we have Patricia and we have Donna. Is there and then of course the symbiote itself. So is there um, any of those in particular that you have a favorite of those three, or do you just love the fact that they together make this new version? Are you? I'm assuming you're a huge fan of the new version. Yeah, I I love I love Andy. I think she's an a, she's an awesome host for Scream. She's another female character who really didn't get quite the attention she deserved. But when I think Scream, my thoughts always go back to Donna Diego, and I I don't know why. Maybe it's because she was the first Scream host that I saw. So it might be one of those things where it's like your favorite host is the one that you've seen or the one that you liked first. But I, I just I always think of her when I think of Scream host. That's pretty awesome. It, you know, it's funny you say that too, because I've noticed because I've quizzed uh, or quizzed, but I asked a lot of people this who've read comics, um, which is you say that you're like, oh, I think a lot of people just love the version that they first were introduced, which is true. That's like ninety nine percent of the time is that's the case. With Venom, it's very funny because technically a lot of longtime comic readers were first introduced to Venom through Peter Parker. And yet, I haven't talked to anybody that tells me Peter Parker is their favorite host for the symbiote. <laughs> um, but you know, I yeah. never even thought about that. That's a good point because my, my husband grew—he, he, you know—he grew up with the Venom comics, and his favorite host is Eddie Brock. Mm-hmm. And I never even thought about how most people their first Venom host probably was Peter Parker. Yeah, like mine was Peter Parker, and then I never even knew who Venom was until years later because my mom wouldn't let me read Spider-Man comics for a few years because the the one of the first ones I read was uh, uh, Craven's Last Hunt, which ended in a suicide, and uh, oh. and and my mom was like, "You absolutely cannot read Spider-Man anymore." Um, and it wasn't until Maximum Carnage started to come out that I was old enough and I started to fall back into comic books, so or at least Spider-Man comics. So um. So yeah, I, so, so to me, yeah, Peter Parker was the host of the black costume, and yet, I mean, those were cool stories, but Eddie Brock is, is my man. Um, so with, with the character Scream, the new book that's out, which is by uh, Clay McLeod Chapman, I think Gary Brown and Chris Mooneyham are artists on the book. What, um, what's kind of your favorite aspect? Because I finally read the first five issues, and that's because of you. Um, I read... <laughs> I read the first issue and I did like it, but I was like, okay, I'm going to wait till this comes out in trade and then I'm going to, I'll buy it then. But then recently Comixology had a sale where issues one through five were a dollar each. So I was like, oh, this will be a good thing. I can catch up so I can talk to Allie and I can ask her if she wants to be on the show. So now I've read them and I would, I'm just curious, what are your, uh, what's your takeaway of the first five issues and, and do you have any favorite moments during it? I think my favorite aspect with these first that with these first five issues mm-hmm. is probably the way that Clay has been handling Andy's mental health because Andy Andy's been through hell. Her and I mean she's been through a lot, and with the first issue, it opens with her trying to jump off a bridge and scream saving her, and then the fifth issue. We, well, she ends up kind of realizing, you know, she's not alone. She has Scream, that she has this, fan, she has a family with her symbiote. And I just think it's an awesome progression to see a character kind of go from feeling hopeless and feeling like they have nothing to realizing that they do have something and there is somebody there that cares for them, even if that's some, that somebody is their symbiote. I think it sends a really good message about mental health and how no matter what we're going through, there's always some sort of support there. And I think that message came across really good in the absolute carnage tie-ins too. Yeah, I agree. Actually, that's, that's amazing. You say that for the theme because it is, it's, it's a really good message about, you know, we all go through these, these tough times, especially nowadays. I've actually, been looking into this a lot in the past couple of years about the in- increase of people who are, you know, openly admit to having um, 
you know, like, uh, you know, challenges as far as like uh, mental stability and, and, and struggles and things they go through. And it's great that people do talk about it because I think that's where you can build a support system is, is you know, people come in to say, hey, I like you and I'm sorry you're going through this. I'm here to listen. I'm here to talk. And this story had that. Actually, my favorite element, too, was she gets that internally with the symbiotes, like you said. But I also love that um, that Mae Parker is a character in the story and that she also offers Andy um, a sense of family, too, which is one of my one of the sweetest moments in that book for me um, as an yeah, Aunt May fan. <laughs> Aunt May, really, I wasn't really, I wasn't completely expect expecting that with the first issue because I kind of wondered, you know, where's Andy gonna go? And I, I know I don't really read a lot of the Spider-Man comics, so I didn't think of the Feast Shelter. But I think it's awesome that Aunt May kind of gets to step up and take Andy under her wing because Aunt May, she doesn't, she doesn't really care. She doesn't, you know, she. It seems like she knows Andy as a symbiote, but at the end of the day, she just wants to make sure that she's safe and that she's cared for and i think that's awesome yeah oh, it's so awesome I, yeah and uh, and i so i want to thank you for pushing me to uh because i think you did on twitter you're like oh dude you should totally get them man like what are you doing uh and so i'm, I'm glad because i read them and i uh, this a couple days ago so i could prepare to talk to you for this and i i do love it and uh, and i that's why i wanted to get your thoughts on it because people will hear mine later i'll do a video on it uh but with with that being said so the new series there was there was a, a slight scare, obviously, during this pandemic and everything that's going on right now. Um, it did affect comic books. It affects comic stores. It's it's happening. It's you know affected fans too, obviously. But uh, there's it is a weird time, uh, and we're starting to get over that hump right now, thankfully. But there was uncertainty with the continuation of the book, and Marvel was announcing a lot of cancellations, and they were announcing a lot of you know things going to digital. So how relieved were you when you found out that this book was not going to get canceled, and it was going to at least still live on in a digital form? I'm glad it didn't get canceled because it's an awesome story, but it does kind of suck that it's going to be digital exclusive because I know that there are people out there who will flat out refuse to buy anything digital, and, and that, that is their own personal choice, and I understand why people do that. But I think it's I think going digital only is going to hurt the sales of the book. So I'm still a little bit worried that with this move to digital, that it might end up getting canceled or the run might get stopped prematurely. But I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to enjoy the run for as long as it's out there, and for longer after that. I'm excited for because when it, with it being digital. It's not going to be 100% digital. It will come out physically in trade. Right. But I am excited that it's not canceled. I have to buy a lot of my comics digitally anyway because I live in a very, very rural area, so there's no comic book stores for miles. So that might be why my thoughts on a comic going digital isn't the same as the thoughts of somebody who has a comic book store you know, like right next door or right down the block. No, I get that, and I've definitely lived in areas like that too. And it's I know the frustration, especially when you're a fan of something and so passionate about it. And I know you, as a collector, you would have loved to continue buying the physical copies so that you can have a collection. Obviously, that's the whole point of comic books in general: is that a lot of us are collectors and we're we're completists and we're purists. You know, and we we like to have every issue if we can. But um, I'm glad, at least for that sake, for you collecting that. Uh, you know the the small silver lining is like you said it'll at least come out in trade at some point uh you know after they do like five or six issues in in digital but you're right i mean i'm i'm scared that a lot of these books that go digital that affects the sales and then when sales are down that hurts the book overall and so i'm curious because i was trying to think of, of a solution of that like the one thing about digital that affects it is that they released comics digitally for the same price as the print book and that actually I never understood, which is why I, I rarely buy digital comics the day they come out. Um, I do if it's a character I love, and I'm sure you will with Scream. Um, and I might too for a couple issues with Scream since I got the first five at such a great deal. Uh, but, you know, so to support it and to support you, I, 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 will, I will give my money to the, the character. Um, and I encourage everyone else to do that too. Uh, but, but I think most people wait a month when the book drops to $1.99 and they buy it then. And sometimes I wonder... Would it just make sense to release it at one ninety nine, um, since you're not paying paying printing costs for it? You know, does that help the book? Would that get more volume on it? You know, and I'm I'm kind of curious your take on that. If if you had a take on that, yeah, that that's a good point because um, 
when I was when I first started kind of buying stuff digitally, my husband actually would kind of pointed that out, you know, saying, you know, why would you want to buy it digital? You can just, you know, order it online from Midtown or wherever, and it's the same exact price. You just pay you just pay shipping. So why 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 do you want to pay the same price for something digital that you can't really physically hold and just you can just get the physical one instead? But I don't know why the costs are for digital the way they are. No. I'm sure there's some sort of behind the scenes reason for it. Maybe lowering the price might help, but there's a lot of people that are so against digital that it may in the end just cut how much profit Marvel gets from the comic. I mean, that's true. And the one thing about the 3.99 price point at up front and then dropping it a month later is that people who really want it and are are, are cool with paying full price for it, they will. And then afterwards, it's a dollar ninety nine a month later, and that way, if people are just randomly scrolling through Comicsology and they're like, "Hey, a dollar ninety nine, I'll check it out," um, or like you know, I said they put them on sale recently for ninety nine cents, and that got me hooked on them. So you're right, I, and I, I think that's a great point that you make, and um, and I you know I, I just want for it, you know now I have an investment. I want you to continue to have content, and uh, and and to do that, I want this book to succeed, and so. You actually came up with a great idea, which I think is so awesome, uh, for a way to celebrate Scream. And I'd love to, for you to tell people a little bit about Scream Day that you have planned coming up. Um, or actually, well, we're recording this later, so unfortunately, uh, it's already happened. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, what what was the reason? I guess let's let's start there. What was the reason behind Scream Day? And uh, and don't worry, when I'll be tweeting about it, I'll help you push it, and, and you know, and I'll try to signal boost you. And then I'll, if I can get an episode of something up before on YouTube, I will also you know mention Scream Day for you. Um, but what is what was kind of the reasoning behind you wanting to do that? And uh, and are you excited that you picked a day that is the day before the next issue comes out, which is amazing. My thought process behind the International Scream Symbiote Day. My first process is I really wish I would have picked a shorter name. I don't know why I went with something so long. It's it's a huge mouthful. It's a lot to type, but um, I was this was before it was announced that the Scream comics were going digital, and I was really really worried that they were just going to get outright canceled. So my thought process was, you know, hey, what if we do this day where a bunch of these fandom accounts. Oh, you know, all of us get together and we talk about Scream. You know, we, you know, maybe buy comics for Scream. We post our Scream merchandise. You know, we just scream about Scream. Why didn't I call it that? Why didn't <laughs> I call it Scream about Scream? <laughs> That's a good one. Good, good, to, good to know for next year, I guess. <laughs> we can change it next year. Yeah, I, I, we can change it next year. No one will notice. <laughs> but, um, so I thought, you know, why not have a day to just celebrate Scream? And... I ended up picking June 2nd, and there was, there's nothing special about June 2nd as far as I'm, I'm, I'm aware. I picked it because I'm very impatient. I didn't want to wait a month for this day that I'm super excited for, but I also wanted to give, you know, myself and other Twitter accounts or other content creators time to come up with things for Scream Symbiote Day, so that's why I picked June 2nd. It was about two weeks, so... I think that two weeks is enough time for everyone to kind of put a little bit of something together if they're wanting to do something like a video or an art piece or a fan fiction or something like that. There you go. And hopefully those who are listening, you know, I know this episode is airing after Scream Day uh, for this year, International uh, Scream Symbiote Day. But, you know, and, and I would say don't let that, but we are recording it before. Um, but I would say still use the hashtag Scream for Scream. If you want, like I'll put it, I'll include your hashtag and we can include Scream for Scream as a second hashtag. Um, yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Yeah. And then that way next year we can ju- you just move Scream to f- Scream for Scream and um and it will be an easier transition. So, yeah, but I, I love that idea. I love that you're doing that. Um, that's great to see. And again, like you said, you wanted to make noise so that Marvel wouldn't cancel the book. And luckily, uh, that didn't happen. At least we're getting the digital form and then the trade form later. But I think, you know, making noise on social media is great. Uh, it always, uh, I think, always lets at least the creators know, even if it doesn't bring about massive change like a lot of people want, uh, it does, the creators take note. Like, I've seen it happen numerous times. So uh, I'll definitely help signal boost it, push that anyway. I'll take pictures of, um, you know, my, my Scream appearances and comics. I'll take pictures of the toy I have. And I'll definitely celebrate that day 
day with you on June 2nd. And those of you who are listening afterwards, you can definitely participate next year. So start building your screen collection. Go out and buy these books in digital format. Buy the first trade paperback that uh, should be out soon. And then buy all the trade paperbacks after that. Buy the digital copies. Help this book stay alive. So that way Ali uh, can A, keep making awesome content. And B, uh, have another screen day next year, which is, uh, I definitely want to see that. Yeah, and like, don't let the date of June 2nd, to any to those of you who are listening, don't let that date of June 2nd kind of lock you into, you know, oh, this this podcast here is, is it's uploaded after that date, so I miss Scream Symbiote Day. Man, this is like Halloween. It is a state <laughs> of mind. You can do International Scream Symbiote Day whenever you feel like it. it it's like, it's going to be like Halloween. Tell you what, I, actually, I'll put this to our listeners. If you're out there listening to this, I don't care if you're listening to it the day it comes out, a year it come, after it comes out, two years after it comes out, and I don't care what day it is of the year. You know, use the Scream for Scream hashtag in the comments below and find Allie on social media and say, hey, I just heard about Scream Day. Hashtag Scream for Scream. Thank you for, you know, for making this great content. So f- track us down and find us. Even if you're listening years later, we're still probably going to be around making great symbiote content for you guys. Yeah, I'm I'm all over the place when it comes to social media. So I guarantee if somebody says something about Scream somewhere, and th- this makes me sound really creepy, but if somebody says something about Scream somewhere, I almost always find it. <laughs> no, but that's good. That's, you know, that's you doing the work and putting the work in that's something I, I always say on my channel is like people who put the work in and uh, and get the message out there are the ones that are often heard the most and and that's a good thing so don't ever lose that work ethic uh, Ali I think you're doing a terrific job I love your channel I love that you made time out of your day to talk to me and share these amazing stories and your passion with us and like I said everyone you can follow her on Twitter at let's talk scream you can subscribe to your YouTube YouTube channel I'll put both those links down below and and Ali is there any last comments you want to make anything you want to say to the audience before we go I mean of course you know thank thanks to you seek for having me on here you know I've enjoyed your content for a long time and it's so awesome to be featured in one of your videos you know thank you to everyone who's listened who's listening to anybody who's bought a scream comic to anyone who's followed me to anyone who's even looked at a picture of scream and went huh she looks pretty cool and it's just it's awesome that we have such a cool community like this it is, and I hopefully through this show and, and you know spreading the word out there, if you guys share this episode, retweet it, uh, spread it around. Let's get more Scream fans out there. I mean, I know we're a lot of us are Venom fans, but we love all these characters. This whole all these characters make up our universe, and uh, and hopefully we can make enough noise. And you know, Scream's already been in a roller coaster, so who knows? Maybe we can get her in a movie one day. That would be amazing. And we're we're already going to get her in Maximum Venom, the cartoon coming up. So that's going to be great too. Man, if she ends up being in a post credit scene for Venom, for, for, if she ends up being in a post credit scene at the end of Venom 2, I'm going to be one of those people screaming in the theater. I just know it. And I know all of us will hear it from around the world. You'll just be like, ah. You'll you, be like, oh, there, you there's Allie. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag scream for scream. Um, right? <laughs> awesome. Allie, thank you again for your time. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, it's no problem, man. It was my pleasure. Thank you. And everyone out there, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And as always, we'll see you in the future. Peace.